Thursday, the 5th of August, 1943. Dear Kitty, today I'm going to take lunchtime. It is half past 12. The whole mixed crowd breathes again. The warehouse boys have gone home now. Above one can hear the noise of Mrs. Van Dam's vacuum cleaner on her beautiful and only carpet. Margot goes with a few books under her arm for her Dutch lesson for children who make no progress, because that's Dussel's attitude. Pim goes into a corner with his inseparable Dickens to try and find peace somewhere. Mommy hurries upstairs to help the industrious housewife, and I go to the bathroom to tidy it up a bit and myself at the same time. Quarter to one. The place is filing up. First, Mr. Von Stanton, then Capuis and Kraler, Eli, and sometimes Mipe as well. One o'clock. We're all sitting, listening to the BBC, sitting, seated around the baby wireless. These are the only times when the members of the secret annex do not interrupt each other because now someone is speaking whom even Mr. Van Dan can't interrupt. Quarter past one. The great share of. Everyone from below gets a cup of soup, and if there is ever a pudding, some of that as well. Mr. Van Sotten is happy and goes to sit on the divan or lean against the writing table, newspaper cup, and usually the cat beside him. If one of the three is missing, he's sure to protest. Okay, so Mr. Van Sotten likes the cat, too. If one of these three is missing, he's sure to protest. Kupilas tell us the latest news from town. He is certainly an excellent source of information. Prayler comes helter-skelter upstairs. A short, firm knock on the door, and in he comes, rubbing his hands, according to his mood, in a good temper, and talkative, or bad-tempered, and quiet. Quarter to two. Everyone rises from the table and goes about his own business. Margot and Mummy to the dishes, Mr. and Mrs. Van Dan to their divan, Peter up to the attic, Daddy to the divan downstairs, Dussel to his bed, and Anne to her work. Then follows the most peaceful hour. Everyone is asleep. No one is disturbed. Dussel dreams of lovely food. The expression on his face gives this away. But I don't look long because the time goes so fast and at four o'clock the pedantic doctor is standing, clock in hand, because I'm one minute late in clearing the table for him. Yours, Anne.